So this is... Hmm. We haven't seen Chevra since that night at Baptiste's place. Well, guess there's no point in worrying about it now. Let's go join up with the others. Good morning! Hayaka and I were just talking about you. Is Shefra still not joining us today? Uh, probably not. We haven't seen her either. Huh? That's such a pity. Director Farina said that we've only got a few small scenes left before wrapping up the entire thing. She even said that she'll get me into a couple scenes, so everyone will have a chance to shine in front of the camera. We were also planning on having a victory feast once we're all finished filming. You can join us, right? Mm, if only Chevros was here. I still haven't taken a photo with her. <sighs> I'm afraid that can't be helped. Those special patrol folks are like phantoms when they've got a case on their hands. But to be honest, I'm even more concerned by what I read in the Steambird earlier this morning. It said that the killer in the murder case was none other than the author of The Two Musketeers. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, too. He came forward and confessed his crimes, but gave no explanation as to why he pulled the trigger. We didn't know about this case at all when we joined the film. Is it going to affect the reception of our work? From a pure publicity standpoint, this will draw a lot more attention to our film. Uh, I have to say, though, that no director can be perfectly comfortable with garnering attention through means other than artistic skill. To be fair, I feel like that ship sailed the moment you allowed yourself to be named as the director on our posters. It's not my fault that I'm super popular. What was that saying again? My popularity has... Uh, sunk to an all-time low? Spread to the four corners of Tavat! <laughs> Uh, excuse me, everyone. Xavier! Feels like it's been ages since we last saw you. I've been talking non-stop with the Film Association, and I'm absolutely swamped trying to coordinate the film's marketing. So forgive me for not being around more often, but please believe me when I say that I will make sure everyone's hard work gets the exposure it deserves. Oh, seems like you've been fighting your own battles. <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it. Oh, and before we begin the final round of filming, please allow me to finally introduce you to the original investor of our film, Mr. Morris. Um, a pleasure to meet you all. Yes, glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Morris. We've heard about the issues you've encountered with your financial situation, and genuinely hope that things have taken a turn for the better. Oh, well, uh, the situation has uh, indeed improved somewhat. Don't worry, Mr. Morris. Accidents and last-minute challenges happen all the time. There's no need to blame yourself over it. The good news is that we're almost done filming now. And I would even say that this is the best story I've ever seen. Is that so? I see that that's, that's great news. All right. Now that we've gotten all the pleasantries out of the way, let's get the show on the road. We'll mostly be filming typical people and scenery from the streets today to improve the sense of environmental ambiance in some parts of the film. Oh, <laughs> and there'll be a cameo for Mr. Kamisato and Miss Yoimiya as well. They'll be used to show outsider perspectives on the fates of the two musketeers. That's right. Ayato should be here any minute. Excellent! Then let's start with the scenery shots. Camera and clapper loader, you're up. We'll be ready! Remember, all we need are some wide zoom shots of the streets. If you happen to find some particularly lovely patches of flowers and grass, feel free to grab some close-ups of those as well. Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! Okay, now move the camera slowly. Uh, try to focus on that flower. Hmm? 
What's wrong? Just adjust the focal length a bit. Something the matter? Uh, huh? But wasn't it working fine for all the days before? Veronique, can we try a different camera? No problem. How about this one? All right, let's give it another try. Lights! Camera! Action! Don't tell me. This one is broken too. Veronique, do we have any other spare ones we can use? Um, I'm afraid we only brought these two today. What? Then go find a workshop to get them repaired right away. Oh, and you too, Bono. Go find our spare camera in the warehouse and bring it back to the set. On it. Greetings, everyone. My apologies for the delay. Hmm? Is something the matter, Ayaka? It seems like there are some issues with the filming equipment today. We're stuck for the moment. I see. Well, let's not just stand here twiddling our thumbs. Actors, to the makeup booth. We'll start on the next scene as soon as we get a working camera. The people at the workshop told me that the part which holds the lens in place seemed to have fallen off. That's super strange. It was perfectly fine just yesterday. Well, no time to dwell on that now. Let's get back to filming. Ahem! Quiet on set! Places, everyone! Lights! Camera! Action! By the way, have you heard about that recent murder case? Hmm, yes, I have. It seems that they've caused quite the commotion in the city. I heard that the Chief of the Guards is so mad about not catching the culprit that he's about to explode! Oh? I find that quite hard to imagine, considering how he already looks most days. Director! Director! We have a problem! Oh, we're in the middle of a take! Couldn't you wait until we wrapped up this scene? No, Director. Our film, all the finalized film that we've been keeping in the case, has disappeared! Oh, wait, well, what did you say? <gasps> Mr. Bono, please take me to where the film was kept right away. I'm coming too. No, Yoimiya, you have to stay here. Oh. Okay, listen up. Everyone who's not working on this current scene can go with Bono to look for the film. Everyone else, stay put and wrap up the scene. Unbelievable. How could all these problems happen in just one day? We're back. How did it go? Did you find the film? We found it in the sewers. Huh? In the sewers? Is the film still okay? We discovered it just in time, so we should still be able to salvage it. The others are checking now to see if we lost any specific scenes. Oh, you scared me for a moment there. I nearly thought we had lost everything. I really don't want to experience that feeling of despair again. Okay, but who could have stolen the film and dumped it there? Um... Could it be uh, some competitors working on other films? But if they wanted to harass us, why wait until the last day? Hmm. Okay, we don't have time to really look into it right now. Let's strike while the iron is still hot and wrap this thing up once and for all. Yeah, let's finish it. I would like to officially announce that our entry to the festival, The Two Musketeers, has now concluded filming! <laughs> uh, I'm on a spent. It's so late already! Even though the filming process proved to be extremely challenging, everyone provided valuable and unique contributions to the final product. Thank you all for your dedication and support! And just like Director Farina, I would also like to extend my most heartfelt thanks to all of you. Really, you've all helped me so much. I just... All right, all right. Let's save the awards speech for later and hopefully also get some rehearsals in before the real thing. Anyway, now it's time to party! <laughs> Let's...
let's all make our way to the beach and have a celebration feast so loud and fun that even the blubber beast will want in. <laughs> party, party, Prima wants to party! Whoa, this place is hopping. Everyone's finally getting to relax after wrapping up the film. Let's go chat with someone. Have you ever seen a fireworks show, Mr. Morris? It's pretty amazing. Um, I'm afraid I haven't, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. is turning out to be quite the party. Farina! Oh, my darling clapper loader and camera operator. You both worked really hard. Paimon thinks you worked even harder than us. Honestly, Paimon was getting a little tired of playing with the clapper board by the end of it. Worst of all, Paimon started having dreams of you shouting, Lights! Camera! Action! into Paimon's ears. The actual dream can't even start until you've yelled that! Uh, hey, if anything, shouldn't I be more grand and delightful than your dreams? <laughs> We've been through so much together, and that's how your brain remembers me? Uh, that, that's not Paimon's fault. We've just used the clapper board too much lately. Anyway, what's most important is that we wrapped the film. I'm pretty confident that we'll take first prize. Hey, no need to mention the official name. <laughs> Wait, now that you mention it, if we did win the prize, would Farina just get a statue of herself? Uh, come on, I don't need that kind of attention. Xavier can accept the reward on our behalf. But just imagine! Farina accepting the Farina Award! And holding a Farina statue. Uh, uh, I'm going back to my dessert now. You all can keep discussing that on your own. Oh, this is turning out to be quite the party. Everything went rather smoothly. Thank you for your concern. Ayato told me that we've already confirmed the dates for some Inazuma Fontaine cultural exchange events. So the next time we visit, we'll be doing so in our capacities as the representatives of the Yashiro Commission. Oh, that's great! Then maybe Paimon will be able to find Fontaine detective novels in Inazuma from now on! Oh, wait. Wouldn't Yaimiko get upset if that happens? That would be stealing some of her business. Ah, you've got a point. She's always complaining that light novels have become bland and too predictable, after all. The cultural exchange won't only feature literatures of both nations, of course. We have also made plans for cross-cultural engagements in the fields of gourmet cuisine, uh, toy making, and artisan craftsmanship. Wow, Paimon's getting super excited now! When the time comes, be sure to visit and participate in all the events. Hey, 
you two. Are you not really into these kinds of big social occasions? Uh, not particularly. But this is still better than Fontaine Fashion Week. <laughs> but if this film becomes a big hit, people will definitely come flocking to your shop. Yes, that's highly likely. As long as the film can premiere as planned. Are you still worried about the case? That, and all the obstacles we had to face today. Hmm, you're right. It's as if all our bad luck just manifested at once. But why today of all days? Hmm? No. No, it's nothing. We've already delivered the film to the editors, so there should be nothing more to worry about. How are you doing, Mr. Morris? You having a good time? Well, you could say that. Uh, do you happen to know when the party is scheduled to end? <laughs> Judging by how much fun everyone's having, I'd say probably not until well after midnight. Is there something that you still have to take care of at home, Mr. Morris? Oh, well, uh, I'm just not a late night person, so I might take off shortly. Oh no! Uh, silly me! I almost forgot something super important. Oh, uh, what is it? I prepared a whole batch of fireworks for the party, but I forgot to bring them over from the warehouse. Fireworks, you say? Well, that's, uh, truly a pity. Sorry things didn't go as planned. Could you help me carry them over, Mr. Morris? I won't be able to fetch all of them by myself. Me? Uh, uh are you sure that you can't find anyone else? <laughs> I just wanted to make this surprise for everyone. The warehouse isn't far from here. We'll be there in no time. Pretty please, Mr. Morris. These are some of the best fireworks I've ever made. So I also want you to see them before you leave. They're stunning. I promise that they'll be a once-in-a-lifetime experience that you'll never forget. Uh, but... It's okay. Just come with me. If we're sneaky enough, nobody else will see us leaving. <sighs> All right. The warehouse is right over here. I moved the fireworks there in advance, so it shouldn't be too much work bringing them back. Uh, it's still a ways away. Shh. Don't let anyone else see us. I still want it to be a surprise. Morris, I think the light switch should be somewhere uh, here. Well, why did I have to get roped into this? <gasps> uh, what was that? Uh, who's there? Get me out! Get me out of here! Did you really think you'd get away, Morris? <laughs> You, you've got the wrong guy! It wasn't me! I, I, I'm not the killer! <laughs> you know, Elisa died a far more heroic death than this. She fought your assassin to the end, to save the children she had hidden beneath the floorboards. That is Elisa's pendant. The one with a photo of you two inside. The one you gave her. Ring any bells? It's a fake! It has to be! There's no way! No way your assassin didn't destroy it, you mean? <laughs> Did you ever love her, Morris? Or was killing her always the plan? No, 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 please! Listen to me! I told Eliza to keep us a secret! I paid her plenty for her silence! I never thought she'd keep the child! Everything was gonna come out, and I had no choice! She forced my hand! No! I'm begging you. I have money. Just, just name your price, please! You can keep your Mora, and you can go to hell. I'm Captain Shavraz of the Special Patrol. Morris, you're under arrest for Eliza's murder. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> <sighs> 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 
you're under arrest too, Prop Manager Veronique. <clears throat> or perhaps I should call you the Second Musketeer. What's going on? This wasn't in the script. Drop the gun, Veronique. Why? Why would you keep me from exacting revenge on this heartless monster? Drop your weapon. This is my final warning. <sighs> what? What is going on? Do I have to spell it out for you, Morris? Everything that took place just now was staged to get you to confess the truth. But this last part is all improv, of course. <sighs> uh, Shivers, you told us you wanted us to help you stage a play. You never said anything about the second musketeer! It's because even I had no way to confirm my theory until now. Thank you for your performance, Yoimiya. Could I trouble you to go and bring in the other special patrol members? They should be on standby just outside. Oh, and please tell the other cast members not to worry about us. We'll be rejoining them shortly. On it! So what do you think, Morris? Care to talk about what happened 20 years ago? <laughs> My patience is limited, you know. Don't force me to take you back to the interrogation room. I'd wager that you wouldn't last for more than a minute in there. With the recording we made, you have no chance of winning in court. Cooperating with us now is the most practical move. All right. I'll talk. I hired an assassin to murder Elisa. She once worked as a maid on my family's estate. She was very beautiful, and after some time I fell for her. We kept our relationship a secret and carried out an affair for some time, but it wasn't long before she became pregnant. And if my parents ever found out, they would have stripped me of my inheritance and status, driven me out of my home. I also didn't expect Elisa to insist on bringing the pregnancy to term. She even asked me to leave my family and travel far, far away with her. She believed that you were truly in love with her. I didn't have a choice! I gave her a large sum of Mora, told her to leave the family and to get rid of the baby. But then years later, she sent me a letter that there were photos of two children and she even asked if I could find some time to visit them! Huh? Two children? Paimon thought Baptiste was the only... Uh... You mean... Even if she had the children against your will, you could have just ignored the letter entirely. Why kill her? I had just gotten engaged to be married to an heiress from another wealthy family. So if anyone were to find out about Elisa, my life would be completely ruined! I didn't have a choice! No. You always had a choice. You just made the wrong choice. Again. <sighs> Do you know how it feels to watch your mother be killed right in front of you? My brother and I were hardly even school age yet. We were hidden beneath the floorboards, grasping each other's hands like a lifeline. We were so terrified that we didn't even know we could ever take a breath. All we could do was to watch Mother try to fight back and then collapse to the floor. Even after the assassin left, we were still too terrified to leave our hiding spot. We thought that he might come back. It was only until the next evening when we finally climbed out and gathered around our mother. But she had already become cold and stiff to the touch. You made up your mind right then and there to bring this case to light. Not only that, we resolved to get our revenge. And that's why you became the Musketeers. No, that's why I became a Musketeer. The man from before was also killed by me. My brother had nothing to do with it. I figured as much. Uh, you did? I once told these two that he didn't look like a killer to me. His confession from that night also rubbed me the wrong way. I think what really tipped me off was, how could I not feel a sense of regret in him? Uh -huh. He confessed faster than any criminal I've ever met, but he didn't say a single word about you. He insisted that he was the sole perpetrator in the case. But after the questioning ended, I disassembled the musket we dug up from his backyard, put it in front of him, and told him to reassemble it. Wanna guess how far he got? 
He had no idea where to even start. He's never touched a gun in his life. Based on that, I determined that he was not acting alone. He only surrendered himself to draw our attention and create a moment of opportunity for his partner. So, I decided to play along. And as expected, the second musketeer followed us without hesitation once she saw Morris get separated from the rest of the cast. Besides, why else would he call the novel The Two Musketeers? But how did you know it was Veronique? I figured it out the moment Baptiste told me his father's name. That so-called financial crisis was all just a ruse. He just wanted to sign up as the investor and then leave the film without any source of funding. After all, he has a vested interest in minimizing the reach of this story. It's really just the same thing as what he did to Elisa all those years ago. Human scum. But then Xavier pulled out all the stops and got the film made against all odds. Morris couldn't have that. With the killer in custody, he figured it was safe to act. And so he came to visit the set today, just as I expected. Wait, so you were behind all those mishaps today? <gasps> as for the identity of the second musketeer, I assumed they'd probably stay close to Morris and look for an opening. And if they already knew that Morris was the film's investor, then that narrowed the list of potential suspects as well. Furthermore, being the props manager would allow the culprit to avoid scrutiny by purchasing mechanical parts in the name of the crew. With that hypothesis in mind, I went back to check Baptiste's orphanage adoption records. Guess whose name I saw on the same page, just a few lines from his. <sighs> My brother. He trusted you. <laughs> As in he trusted me to perform the deed on his behalf? He trusted you to stand on the side of justice. I am. I thought you could do it as well. Oh, the look on your face when you told him to go to hell. I really thought you'd put a bullet in his brain. <sighs> you know what he has done. Are you telling me that you'd rather see him spend the rest of his life living like a king in the fortress of Meripede? I will never be able to forget the feeling of my mother's cold, lifeless hands. And you would call this ending fair? Is this what you call justice? I won't lie, Veronique. I did hesitate when your brother first told me about the truth. I wondered. I agonized over whether I should really put a bullet in his head. So why don't you? Because that should never be how justice is carried out in this world. Perhaps, to you, justice is simply reciprocated. An eye for an eye, and a life for a life. But everyone has their own understanding of justice. If everyone were to pursue their own definition of it, there would be no more order in this world. Today, you'll kill Morris, and tomorrow, his children may come for you. The world cannot render judgments based on a desire for revenge. That will only lead to a cycle of revenge, as well as the destruction of order and civilized society. Fontaine is founded on a set of laws and a standardized code of justice. That is why we are the nation of justice. But with all that said, I will promise you this. Morris will not lead a cushy life in the fortress of Meripede. Chivalrous? The rest of the special patrol is here. Thank you so much, Yoimiya. L'Atelier, Terena, please take them away. I still can't agree with your reasoning. <sighs> I know. Justice has not been delivered. At least, not today. <sighs> Chevres. Let's go. We should give an explanation to the crew. Thank you for your concern. I'm fine. I'm just thinking about the things in life that have driven people to take justice into their own hands. Who would have thought Morris would turn out to be? Uh, I'm at a loss of words. How could he have done something like this? I'm just glad that you're all safe and sound. 
Who knew that such a labyrinth of cases would be behind this story? Well, what should we do now? We have a finished film, of course, but should we still go ahead with the premiere? What do you mean? Shouldn't you be even more motivated to spread the word now that you've learned the truth? Chiori is right. I'd also like more people to see this story for themselves. But the real ending of the story seems to have deviated somewhat from the one in the script. Is that still acceptable to you, Miss Chevres? Mm -hmm. The call is yours. We still have time to reshoot an ending if that's what you'd like. No, it's fine as is. I like what we have for the catharsis. Romanticism is what gives works of art their appeal. Fiction is able to explore means of restitution that could never work in real life. Just like the real world, the world of stories also has its own set of rules and justice. These different possibilities are what initially drew me to reading in the first place. Sounds good to me. I support your decision. What about Veronique? Will she be okay? She will soon face her judgment alongside her brother and Morris. If I had to guess, they'll probably all be sent to the Fortress of Meripede. I'll make sure to give Risley a heads up about it. Oh. You mean that kind of heads up? Exactly. Ahem! All right, then the matter's settled. Now that everything's been taken care of, there's no reason for us to keep looking all gloomy and grumpy. Let's get back to the feast and enjoy each other's company. We'll be starting the post-production process tomorrow. You should join us, Chevrus. You missed the first few hours of the party, didn't you? All right, count me in. Then I'll wait for you over there. There's still some good news that I'd like to share with Chevras. Traveler, Paimon, could you wait for me by the sea after the party ends? I'd like to go on a brief walk with the two of you. Thank you very much. Sorry for the wait. Oh, we weren't waiting long at all. Is there something else you wanted to tell us? No, I don't have anything new to share. I just felt that, since you were my investigation partners, I should have another conversation with the two of you. Uh... Traveler, how would you have responded to Baptiste's request if you were in my shoes? Is that so? Oh, well, thanks for sharing. When I was young, my father often took me here to swim. We'd come rain or shine, even when it was freezing cold. He told me that swimming was the best activity to train one's strength of will. You could never give up before reaching the shore, especially when the water was cold. Oh? Why is that? Because the moment you give up would be the moment you die. At that point, I still hadn't received my vision. One winter, the chilly wind felt almost like knives on my skin, and the seawater was so frigid that it numbed my toes the moment I stepped in. I cried and begged my father to spare me from having to swim across, but he wouldn't listen. He used to be a member of the Special Patrol as well. You could say it was his way of educating his children. That sounds awful. When he saw that I wouldn't stop crying, he just picked me up and tossed me into the icy water. The bone-chilling cold took away my senses, I couldn't feel anything but fear and rage. I waited for my father to save me, but one look and I knew he'd already started swimming for the opposite shore. I realized that if I were to give up, I really would die right then and there. I used all of my strength to try and catch up to my father. Those few minutes felt longer than my whole life up until that point. I did, however, make it to the other side. I've never felt afraid about anything in my life after that, nor have I ever cried again. That way of teaching would have never worked on Paimon. Yeah, I don't think that was the right method for anyone. It's just that, working now as I am in the pursuit of justice, I still sometimes feel like I've been tossed into that winter sea all over again. The anger and the helplessness. Chevres. But the worse I feel, the more I know to never give up. The alternative would be to forever lose myself among the waves. 
Anyway, how about a race? Neither of us will drown, but we can still see who swims faster. Uh, you guys go ahead! Paimon will grab the clapper board to mark the start of the race! That felt good. You were so fast in the water, Chevras. You were swimming even faster than Paimon could fly. Uh, so, about the special patrol. Did you join because of your dad? Partly. But I'd say I was more inspired by the heroes I read about in stories growing up. Oh, so it's due to your love of stories. Of course. It was only after I joined the special patrol that I learned that truth is often stranger than fiction. Come on, let's walk a bit more. To be honest, I do sometimes question whether the decisions I make are the right ones. But I know that no matter what, I must keep swimming. Because the only thing I've got my eyes on is the shore in the distance. Thank you for coming on this walk with me. I feel a lot better after getting all that off my chest. Huh. We're nearly back at Baptiste's house. Huh. You're right. I didn't realize we were so close. He really did plant a lot of flowers. It's just like how he described it in the story. Huh? <gasps> Wait. Paimon, Traveler, look! The rainbow roses in the garden. They're in full bloom now. Even though it's a bit late, I must thank you for investigating this case with me. Not on behalf of the Special Patrol this time. It's a personal expression of gratitude from yours truly. Oh, you want to hear more about my father? To be honest, I didn't spend that much time with him. He was always busy with the special patrol, so he would often return home really late at night. Some nights, he didn't come home at all. Once, he didn't come home for a long time, maybe a whole week or so. When I went out to buy food, I learned that he had become a criminal, and by extension, that made me a criminal's daughter. But we can talk about that another day. I actually have a lot of sympathy for Veronique and Baptiste. I can understand the hatred they feel for their father, but that doesn't mean I'll allow them to walk the path of evil, even if it might lead to another sense of justice. Films are different from the real world. They're a form of art and represent the wishes in people's hearts. I adore the two musketeers, and I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to act the role as one. I can't wait to catch the film when it premieres in the Opera House. I'm looking forward to seeing the audience's reaction to the climactic ending. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll see you at the award ceremony. I'd be very surprised if we don't win. Another no. test. Yeah. Uh, picked the wrong test subject. <laughs> 